cut them on. But Luke chapter 14, look with me please in verse 16. Then said he unto him, A certain man bade, made a great supper and bade many and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I can not come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city. Bring in hither the poor and the main and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Uh, Brother Doug, you pray over me if you would. If you'd pray over me, I'm going to preach on a powerless invitation. Our Father, we bless you. Oh, Thank God. You we can be in the house of God today. Yes. Thank you for the word of God. It's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Now I pray for the man of God. I pray you'd anoint him with power and unction from on high. I God pray grant. to his remembrance those things he's been faithful to study. Pour out of him exactly what we need yes. this morning. Uh, God yes. give us ears yes. to hear, uh, and hearts swift to obey what thus saith the Lord. Uh, God, I pray uh, there's anybody here today cold and different on God. Today be the day you revive their soul. Uh, yes. God, I pray uh, there's anybody here today lost without Christ. Uh, Holy Ghost conviction would fall on them. Oh, yes. That we might see them born again. Uh, God, I pray uh, oh. for the choices, saint of God. Uh, oh. You still stir that fire down in their soul. Uh, oh, God, God go please. Place, uh, shining his lights in a dark world. Uh, that, God, we might see uh, folks come to Christ. Uh, God, see oh, God, Bible, please. Because uh, you're a great God. Uh, bless now thy servant. Uh, We'll bless you for it, for it's in Jesus' uh, wonderful and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 The Holy God's young and said, Amen. on a powerless invitation. I've been preaching for 50 years. There was a time in my ministry, I remember, it seems that folk came to church believing God. Amen. I mean, we could have revival meeting when I first began pastoring in 1974. And uh, 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 when I began to pastor, we'd have revival meeting. And uh, uh, just no time preacher, no education, basically. Uh, they'd just come and read a text and preach what God uh, put in their heart to preach and say what they felt like needed to be said. Right. And, then, and then folks start coming to the altar. I mean, you didn't have to beg them to, beg them to come. Right. You didn't have to push them off. You didn't have to prop them up. Right. No, sir. You didn't have to pull them. Right. No, sir. It was, that was under Holy Ghost conviction. Yeah. Yeah. And the God of heaven began to draw these folk. I remember those days when a preacher would preach and during those revival meetings and we'd have six, eight, ten, twelve, fifteen folk get saved every revival meeting when I first started pastoring. Uh, that was not unusual. I mean, folk come. Ladies would get on one side of the church 
The men would get on the other side of the church. The little old church was just a little small frame building and, and no, no stained glass. It was just see-through. And uh, uh, ladies would get on that side. And that, that, hey, that, that, I mean, I, they were calling on God. It, it, hey, it didn't bother them about their mascara. It, hey, hey, it, that didn't, it didn't upset them all to come into church house. Uh, look like somebody's been drawing on their face. Hey, that didn't bother them at all. I mean, they've been out there. They've been, they've been, they've been looking towards heaven and hope and praying that heaven would come where they were. And the men would get on this side and they'd begin to holler unto God. And it sounded like, it sounded like they're praying like God's 50 miles away and God ain't going to hear them unless they holler loud enough. I mean, that's the way it was when I was a young man coming up. I mean, folks just believe God again. Hey, could we not come to church and get in a service where the Holy Ghost is preeminent and the old time preaching is, is faithful and the Word of God's sure and steadfast and we can say, oh God, we believe you again and see the Holy Ghost drop folk unto himself. My goodness alive, I'm telling you, this is the reason why the church is planted here that sinners be saved. Well, a powerless invitation. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to take time I, uh, to give you everything, but let me just see if I can just show you the picture here in Luke 14 and Luke 15. And Luke 16. In Luke 14 is earth madness. Everybody's doing their own thing. My goodness alive. Have you met a few of those folk? I tell you where you met them at. You met them over at the house of God. I mean, folk are busy. I mean, they're going to and fro. They're not looking for God. They're really not. They're not hungry for the holy things of God. No. You can tell it by the way they're living. Right. Yes, sir. My goodness alive. Surely, surely, surely God would get big enough in somebody. That's who we'd see. Right. Yes. Right. Amen. Yes. Just go ahead and see God. I don't see nobody else. I should see him. Yes. Hallelujah. But the earth is mad. I mean, folk are going crazy. Yes. I, I'm, I'm just about, I'm about near told myself in, 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 in slowing down and, and about near stopping, I've got to a place where I hate to drive. I get inside my car, I've never become a nervous wreck. Everybody's blowing their horn. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Hey Amen. I don't know how it is up here, but come down south. Everybody's got a horn down there. And they're going to blow it, brother. I mean, I, I'm just saying, earth madness, they're going to and fro here and there. And, and, and God's not on most of them's mind. I mean, this thing's going backwards. Right, right, right. Uh, and, and we come to the house of God, to the church house, and we're, and we're thinking that a one hour is going to fix us. Brother, I'm just telling you, one hour is not enough for me. That's the reason I'm in church not every day of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I go to church to stay right. Yeah. Amen. And, and if I drive 60 miles, I've got to get right. Yeah. 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 Amen. I'm just being honest with you. Yeah. Amen. Earth, earth madness. But in this, the gospel message yeah. is going forth. Yeah. So the message of the gospel the going forth of the gospel is important. Yes, yes. The preaching of the gospel is important. Sure, right, sure. The sowing of the seed is important. Yes, right. Even in a mad earth. Yes. Even when folk are offered all kinds of excuses. Sure, right. Yes, sir. And they're telling you they can't come because of this or they can't come because of that. I'm just telling you here this morning uh, we still have a mandate from heaven to preach the gospel and to share the gospel the going forth of the gospel. Amen. Let me tell you why it's important. Listen to me. Tell you why it's important. The next chapter in Luke 15 
is a picture of heaven's gladness. Earth madness in 14, but heaven's gladness in 15. Amen. 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 If you get saved and you get born again, there's a place called heaven. Yeah. Right. Amen. Right. That's where the redeemed will live forever. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's where the saints will shout it on, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Hey, hey, can I tell you, here this morning, I'm glad I'm going to a place where the sun never sets. Yeah. Well, glory, yeah. I'm just telling you, I'm heaven, I'm heaven bound with a hammer down. I'm going to a place where the sun never sets. Hey, man, I'm going to a place where the saints are never sorrow. Hey, man, I've had my sorrows around here. I don't know about you. I've done planted most of my family. I mean, I planted most of all my family. I'm, 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 one of, I'm one of the few that's still living beside my kids now. I'm talking about my generation. My mom and dad, my brothers, they're about all gone. Um, my wife and her mom and her dad, most of her family's gone. I planted, I planted, preached her daddy's funeral. I preached her mother's funeral. I preached her brother's funeral. I, I, I mean, I preached her sister's funeral. I, I, my brother-in-law's funeral. I, my, my, my nephew's funeral. I, 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 hey, I know what sorrow is. But thank God, because of salvation, because of the redemption plan of Christ, I can shout now because I know I'm going to shout then because there is a heaven where the saints never sorrow again. No more sorrow there. Hallelujah. Sun never set. Saints are never sorrow. And the singing won't stop. Hallelujah. I, hey, <laughs> what a song to sing. Redeemed, redeemed. Oh, I'm glad to tell it. I'm redeemed. Can anybody help me out? Glory to God. The singing will never stop. I'm going to heaven. Thank God we're the Savior is never out of sight. Glory. Amen. Never be out of sight there. Hey, glory to God. You, hey, he'll always be the precious one. He'll always be the pointed one. Hey, yes, sir. Glory to his name. Hallelujah to the Lord forever. Thank God he'll always be on display in that other world. I'm glad there's a heaven, aren't you? The going forth of the gospel is important because there's a heaven. Aren't you glad you're on your way to heaven? Hey man, thank God I'm 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 on my way to heaven. And the journey gets sweeter every day. Praise God, son. I'm just telling you, uh, I never get through preaching. I just get tired and sit down. I'm glad there's a heaven. Aren't you? Boy, you start getting our age. It's 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 more sweeter than it's ever been. Hey man. I mean, every time I pass by a casket, boy, heaven's sweet. Mm, glory. Hallelujah. When they go to the graveyard, heaven's sweet. Thank God. The going forth of the gospel, the earth is mad, but thank God there's a gladness in heaven. There's a joy that's in the other world. Well, for one sinner that repenteth, Glory. Can anybody help me out here this morning? I'm telling you, who is that getting happy in heaven? It's not the angels. No, sir. I tell you who it is. It's God the Father. It's God the Son. And it's God the Holy Ghost. Each one of them said, come and join with me and we will rejoice over this sinner being saved. The shepherd said it. The spirit, the church said it. And thank God the Father said it. Hallelujah, brother. I'm just telling you, there's joy in heaven over one sinner getting saved. Amen. 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 Have you ever led somebody to Jesus and just felt like you got saved too? 
Amen. That's about as close as you'll get to being born again twice is leading somebody to the Lord. I kind of tell you this story. I ain't preaching too long, am I? I got to tell you this story. I was riding down a road there in Alabama and, uh, 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 and I was, and the Lord dealt my heart about stopping at his house. And I knew the old boy there. And I stopped and I, I pulled in and, and he come running out. Now, this old boy done old deed three times and his, his ears was, was red as beets and his eyes was like egg yolks, yellow as egg yolks. He come running out there. He thought I was one of his buddies that was bringing him more dope. <laughs> Boy, wasn't he surprised. I get out of my car. I just right there on the side of the road. He come over there and he said, what are you doing? I said, Stan, I come to tell you about Jesus. He said, okay. He said, you know what I've been thinking about here lately? He said, this is what he said. He said, I found my, mom, my, my grandma's old Bible in a trunk the other day. And said, I was digging in the trunk, hoping to find something of value where I could punt it or sell it and buy me some more dope with it. I said, but I've come across grandma's old Bible and said, I got to thinking about God. I said, let me tell you about it. I took my old King James Bible out while, church, while cars was going east and cars was going west. Out there at an old stomp on the side of the road, we was going up and up was coming down. Hallelujah. And old Stan got saved that day. Amen. He had blonde hair down about right here. There's some folk would probably pay a thousand dollars for that head of hair he had. I mean, he had blonde hair down here, and I was pastoring in. He'd come to church that Sunday morning, and uh, and everybody I welcome in. And I said, "This is Brother Stans. I ain't gonna say his last name. He's still pre. He's got called into preaching. He's preaching. He's pastoring now, and uh, and uh, and it's called to preach under my ministry as well as getting saved." And old brother Stan, he 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 stood there. Folk come by and, and hugged him and said, "Welcome to the family." And and that night, one of my deacons come to me and said, "Preacher, we got another visitor tonight." I said, "Wow, thank God, you know." And they said, "Here he is back there." And I look, where's old Stan? Yeah. Yeah. Between Sunday morning and Sunday night, he got all his haircut. Yeah. Hey, Amen. He took all of his. Go- paraphernalia and off of him. <laughs> anyway, I won't go there. But he looked different. I said, no, that's the guy got saved the other night on visitation. Oh, is it? Man, does he look different. Yeah, that's called grace. Is anybody with me here? <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. That's called grace. <laughs> the only one that I've ever, I ever baptized that talked to the baptistry. I baptized old Stan and when I took him down in the water and he come up now you have to to remember his mind's done been burnt up he couldn't spell his name I mean his mind was gone I mean that's how bad drugs messed him up and the only way that he got savaged was through the Bible I put him on a memorization program and me and him memorized scripture together. And I cut loose this morning and just quote Bible, uh, but, but, but that's, not, that's not my reasoning right now. Uh, but we, we begin to memorize scripture and the word of God put his mind back in him. Hallelujah. But when I baptized, baptized him, he just staggered over that little glass, put his, put his arm up on that glass, sort of just fell over. And he just started talking to the baptistry. He said, baptistry, now I'm standing here looking at him. He said, baptistry, I, I, have, I have took enough of, and drank enough of alcohol and, and, and beer and liquor and marijuana and drunk, drugs and hard stuff. I've took enough stuff to fill you probably three times. But I never in my life got a thrill out of it like I just got out of you. Glory to God. I'm telling you, right there, well, I'm telling you, the high waves was coming in that battery. Glory to his name. That's what salvation will do to you. 
Aren't you glad there's a heaven? Yeah. And then let me hurry, and I'm going to stop. We move to Luke 16. We see earth's madness. We see heaven's gladness. And then we see hell's sadness. The going forth of the gospel. If you get saved, you go to heaven. And if you don't get saved, you go to hell. That's the going forth of the gospel. The reason why we tell folk about Jesus is because there's a heaven and because there's a hell and we want folk to go to heaven with us. My, my wife, I was married to 48 and a half years, she'd always say, Michael, she'd call me Michael. She's one of the few that has that right. She'd say, Michael, their only purpose here on this earth is to take somebody to heaven with us. Right. Amen. Amen. Is anybody with me? Yes. And our family is our main mission. Right. Yeah. We want to take them to heaven with us. Why do we want them to get saved? Because there is a heaven. Yes. But in Luke 16, there's a place called hell. For those that rejects the gospel, for those that refuse the invitation in coming, for those that turns down that moment and says, I'm going to excuse myself, excuse me, I'm not interested. Oh, but if I was a church that's on her knees and a church is seeking God, and a people that's glad they're saved. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. They pick me up out of the miry clay. Pick me up out of the muck and the mire. And he washed me in his blood. And he saved me by his good grace. And he put God in me. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 I ought to be excited about telling somebody about him. Yeah. When my old daddy got saved... My daddy was a bartender in Birmingham, Alabama called Fife and Drum, no, Fifth and Drum, Fight and Run. That's where he worked. He was a bartender, pretty good-sized guy, a little bit bigger than me. And, and, uh, and he went to an old revival meeting one night. Two old preachers there he hated, Woodrow and Woodrow. Both of them had the first name, but different last name, and Woodrow, Woodrow. He did. He hated them. Man, every time he seen them, they won't tell him about Jesus. Get out of here with that junk. He went to revival meeting that night, and guess what happened? Church must have been on praying ground. The old preacher had the Holy Ghost in him. Just a preach in the Bible. And he got under conviction. And the Lord drawed him to an altar. And he bowed. And he got saved that night. And he got up. Guess who he saw? On this side was Woodrow. And on this side was Woodrow. Yeah. My goodness, life. Don't he test you real quick? Yeah. He hugged both of them just a few days later. God called my daddy to preach. And God put those three men. They preached all around our area together until all three of them died. But I tell you what he did. He went back the next day, told the, told the police down there he couldn't come back. Nobody told him. He just knew he couldn't go. Right, right. You know what he did? See your Bible. He swapped out his bottle <laughs> and he took the book. Yeah. 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 Glory to God. Yeah. That man. And he preached till he died. Pastor the same church till he died. There's a hell. We're warning folk. And I pray here this morning that the invitation, the preaching don't come from the pulpit and stop right here. I pray there's, there's a dagger and it goes out and it's sharp. I pray there's not a wall here this morning. I pray the church has been on praying ground and we've been in revival this week and I come, I come two nights and I'm not even a member here. Amen. I, hey, I didn't have to come. He, he didn't make me come. Matter of fact, he told me I didn't have to come. Now, you believe that? 
He said, I want you to enjoy. We've never been, we've never been here. We've never been to the art. We've never, we, haven't, we haven't been to the Creation Museum. Uh, I'm not on Facebook. My, my face is in the book. Hey, Amen. I don't know much about anything much more besides just preaching. So I don't know much. All I do now, I know this. If we got a powerless invitation, the message may be true and it may be pure, but it could stop right here. Because people builds up walls. Don't think I'm fussing right here, preacher, okay? I'm not fussing. I cannot tell you, sir, how many churches... Let me preach you. You've got to smile. <laughs> hey, man, what you do too, brother? But I cannot tell you how many churches I preached at. When I got through preaching, people just get up and walk out during the invitation. Now, I hope it don't happen here. It probably won't happen this morning since I'm talking about it. You probably just go ahead and endure to the end. But I cannot tell you the number of times that I have got to the invitation and unconcerned cohorts get up and walk out the back door. I'm not, I'm just telling you, that's the most important part of the meeting today. Is that we give God right. We just give Him right to go beyond our boundaries. And just reach out into the pews. And I don't know. I, I'm telling you, I believe there's at least three folk here lost this morning. I just believe that with all my heart. I've been around some of them old men that didn't mind saying, we got three here to can get saved today. If you just go ahead and get saved, you'll go to heaven. Amen. Yeah, right. That's the way I was raised. I just for my and for some reason in my heart, I, I just feel there's at least three in here this morning. I, I was preaching down in, in Phoenix City, Alabama a few years ago, and for some, some reason on Sunday morning like this. I was a preaching and, and the Holy Ghost said, there's eight folk in here and get saved today. I said, glory to God. I said, he said, tell them. I said, oh, cry. There's eight folk in here and get saved today. Not that I know much, but I just know that when the Holy Ghost speaks in my heart, I know he's right. Yeah, right. And I know he's faithful in what he does. Right. right. Yeah, he does. Pastor's daddy got saved that day. He was treasurer of the church. Wow. He walked down and fell down over here and the pastor knelt down beside him. He looked up at me and said, come here, preacher. He said, my daddy. I said, yeah, man. Boy, he's a wonderful man. And he, he said, no, he's lost. Mm -hmm. wow. no, uh-uh, not this guy. If he had died before that Sunday, we'd have all preached him into heaven because, man, he sure had seemed with the testimony about sure. being saved. Sure. I mean, boy, he had every kind of good action that you could have. He was a treasure of the church, honest treasure. Amen. And uh, I mean, faithful, I'm telling you, he's one of the first there and the last to leave. Mm -hmm. He looked at me and he said, Preacher Ragland, he said, I've never been saved. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And uh, four is over with, guess how many got saved that Sunday morning? Eight folk got saved. The eighth one, as he got up from the altar, and uh, he, you could see the glow. He went to the back of the church. There's a young man back there. He put his arms around him. And that young man started weeping and crying. And he brought him down to the altar. And he, just being born again, uh, showed him how to get saved also. Hallelujah. I said, that's number eight, praise God. Strike up the music, my friend. There is a heaven and there's a hell. The reason why we give out the gospel is folk can go to heaven with us and folks stay out of hell. You hear lost this morning and you don't know the Lord. One time I was preaching like this and I, was just, I just stopped and I was just looking. At this guy fell out of the pew. Just, I'm not picking on you. I'm just about to about where it was. He just fell out of the pew on the, on, uh, in the middle of the aisle and he just he just uh, started crawling down the aisle. He just began to bellow and cry. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Amen. Amen. I'm just guilty as all guilt. I'm guilty. I'm a guilty sinner. Amen. I wonder if you'd just go ahead and admit 
this morning. Had revival. I think he had the two nights I was here, brother. I, I just, I was just so thrilled. It helped me. Of course, I, I, I knew, I know Brother Mark Stroud, know him pretty well. I run with his preacher. His preacher. I preached meetings for old Brother Willard Thomason, and uh, Brother Willard, my friend, he's in heaven now. But I tell you, I enjoyed it, boy. Y'all would be so appreciative if y'all get around meetings where Holy Ghost works and uh, work. Were the shouts still there? Yeah. Don't be ashamed to raise your hands. I mean, hey, I mean, I don't don't be ashamed to just say, "Whoop, glory." Yeah. Sure. Amen. Right. Right. I mean, practice it sometimes. Sure. Amen. Amen. I wonder who it is. There's three, at least three. Could be more. Could be more. You're on your way to hell, and you know it. You know you've never been saved. You know that you have not trusted Christ as your prayer. You know that. You know you have tried your mind, try to warp it around to understanding, and and yeah, hey, hey, you tried to uh, philosophically try to figure this thing out, and and did uh, uh, was there someone that was born of a virgin? And, and, and I, y'all went through the creation museum, and, and and some things I agreed with. Probably I didn't go there to disagree with nothing. I just went through there thanking God by faith. I can understand that the world was framed by the word of God. Hallelujah. And that's how God saved. Praise God. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.